Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about pulse welding, which is something that's, you know, completely new to me, myself. Um, and, and I'll kind of explain what, what it's doing and what the idea is. Um, I've heard a lot of people talk about how, you know, this is just a sales gimmick. And then I've heard some people say that it's awesome. So we're going to test that in this video. So the first thing, as soon as I pulled this out of the box was the side of the machine. I mean, it is just, the coolest thing ever. And then of course, on the front of the machine over here, you got a really nice screen. Um, and I'm, you know, seeing some features already. I haven't, you know, plugged in, haven't tested it. So it's just fresh out of the box. Everything's still coiled up the way that it comes in the box. I'm gonna be kind of learning uh, how to get comfortable with the pulse welding as I'm going through the video with you. I'm gonna show you guys the difference because you can actually just hear the difference uh, whenever you go into a, a pulse mode. So first of all, I just wanted to clarify, like this is usually me, this is my life, is repairing thin sheet metal stuff. So, um, you know, I don't do a whole lot of like really thick gauge metal. Um, I do have some different thicknesses that I'm gonna try out that are kind of applicable to what I do. You get a really nice MIG gun here. And it's got a swivel end on it, which I love that because you can really get into kind of weird positions and get a good, comfortable grip on it. Um, so I really like when they include that swivel joint right there. It's got a coil around the cable there, and that basically just protects it from, you know, like a real sharp bend or anything. It just kind of, you know, makes it a gentle radius rather than like a real hard bend right there. They also send you another liner, okay? And, you know, first I looked at it and uh, it's not a normal liner, it's a different liner. So the liner actually goes inside your MIG gun and it actually allows you to MIG weld aluminum. You've also got a lead for a stick welder. We're not gonna mess with that. And then of course you have your ground clamp. So let's get all this stuff hooked up. All right guys, so one thing about this machine that I think is super cool is that it's got a help screen and it basically tells you exactly, so you know you can kind of go through the different options over here on this side and then you can scroll through some different selections over here. But basically this is just telling you exactly how to set it up. So we're gonna do MIG mode and I can see that the gun has to be right here and then the lead coming out of the left side just loops back around and goes into there. And then your ground clamp is going to be on the very far right side. So makes it very easy. And, and of course, you know, you can scroll through here and see all the other stuff too. So uh, it's got options for flux core, TIG mode, stick. So it's pretty awesome. So this also shows you pictures of how to set up your machine. So. I think this is the most in-depth set of instructions that I've ever seen for a welder in general, but also, you know, the fact that it's on the screen is just amazing to me. All right, guys, so I've got everything hooked up. I did a couple tacks just to make sure the machine was running right. So basically, all I'm gonna do for this first test is we're gonna have it on 110. Um, so it's not gonna be, you know, I've got my generator back there just in case I have to uh, hook into that. All right, so for right now, what I'm gonna do is just leave it on 110. Um, I've got a couple pieces of 1 8 They're just some, you know, short little strips. And I'm gonna see how it does on welding those. Um, the machine advertises that it'll do eighth inch on a 110. Um, and, you know, normally when a machine says that, it doesn't always do the best. It kind of, it does better if you plug it into a generator or you know, a, a 220 receptacle. So it's gonna be a pretty good test for it, um, just to see if it's capable of doing what it advertises at eighth inch. If I can get eighth inch off of a 110 receptacle, this is gonna be pretty impressive. So um, I've got everything set up. 
Again, I'm not messing with the settings at all. I'm gonna get a couple pieces of this eighth inch material ground down here and ready to weld. All right, so I got my two pieces. I'm gonna be setting one up like this, just vertically, and then the other one right up against it, and it's gonna make a 90. So um, very common joint here. It's not the cleanest cut I've ever seen in my life, but I think I can make it work. All right, let's see what she does. I'm gonna have to make a couple more passes to make sure I'm actually getting in the corner efficiently. So, but for the first one, I mean, that's pretty good straight out of the box. I don't think I'm gonna do any other uh, changes to the settings because it's got a nice flat weld to it. So um, I'm gonna go ahead, get a couple more pieces and then see if I can't uh, get that in the corner a little bit better. Again, we're using the Yes Welder DP200. So uh, this is not even the limit of the, what the features on this machine can do. So, um, you know, right now we're just trying to see how the machine does in general. And then I'll go, I'm gonna run a couple more uh, pieces like this, see if I can clean it up, maybe do a couple different joints and then um, switch to some thinner stuff and then just uh, switch over to the pulse and see what that sounds like. So the biggest thing is pay attention to what the, the arc sounds like now and then when I switch over to the pulse, you're gonna notice a huge difference. So um, let's go ahead, run this out, and then we'll see what that looks like. I've got old man eyes, so I like using a light. It helps me see better, so. Man, I tripped a breaker. <laughs> this, this weld is looking so good too. <laughs> Dang it. Let me go reset that. All right, so you can see all the way through here, the weld looked really good. And then it got out to here and my breaker died. But that is, that's a really good weld. I, I mean, it's, it's a consistent weld. I would say like for the stuff that I do, you know, I'm not saying I'm the, you know, number one welder in the world, I'm not even close to it, but, um, that's pretty good. All right, so I wanna try, because I'm just so excited to try it now, I wanna see what I can do with the pulse welding. So um, I'm gonna see if I can figure these machine settings out and set that up. So pulse welding is basically, the, the machine is basically sending a pulse. So it, it, obviously, it alternates between high and low. So it, it's, you know, basically just, giving an arc that's you know hotter and then cooler and then hotter and cooler and it basically it, it's it's just varying your settings back and forth and back and forth and you can fine tune it like you can you know set the frequency and that's obviously how frequent it is sending those pulses and how quickly it is alternating from the higher setting to, to the lower setting so you can fine tune all that stuff on the machine this is insane, the sun in my eyes right now. Hold on, I'm gonna scoot up. So the whole theory behind this is really just to alternate between high and a low setting so that it's controlling the amount of heat that's going into the piece. So that's really the idea. Um, you know, whether or not it works or it's needed, um, we're just gonna test it out and see. today I had to switch to my GoPro because as soon as I said my camera was gonna die what did it do it died so I'm gonna go ahead and see if this audio works out on here so I've got a piece of angle and I'm just gonna weld directly into the corner um, 
again this is more so just to see what the single and the double pulse sounds like and uh, you know we'll just we'll just see I've done a couple little test pieces and uh, I'm I'll kind of explain later but I'm having to make some adjustments and everything so um, I'll get into that after I do a couple welds for you All right, so as you can see, lots of spatter. This is just the way that it's set. Um, I'm gonna see if I can clean this up a little bit by adjusting the settings. And I'll, I'll explain why I think that it's doing this, but I'm gonna see if I can clean it up a little bit first. All right, so that was that first run with the pulse on. See all the spatter back here. And then this was that little section with the pulse off, way cleaner. And I'm pretty sure all this other spatter, it, cause you can see it up here between these two. I think that all this was actually mostly from these other welds with the pulse on. So then, you know, that's another double pulse. That's another double pulse. This one I tried going faster wire speed. This one I did, or not faster wire speed, but faster movement. I tried lowering the uh, wire speed, raising it. I've tried lowering the voltage, raising the voltage. I've tried everything. So, and then they all just look like this. So let me show you. All right, so pulse off. You can see that down there. So pay attention to this 75, 25. That's what I'm using on my gas mix. 035 wire, eighth inch thickness. That's just your, uh, like whether you wanna just tap the trigger once and then tap it again to stop it or if you wanna hold it down the whole time. So I've got all this stuff set and then this pulse off, when you turn it to on, watch the argon. It goes to 90. So I go back over here It says 90, 10, and you, you can't go up or down. So, and then you go over here to the wire feed speed, or you, you go over here to the wire size, and you can't go any smaller than three, five. So I can go to four, five, but I can't go to three, oh, or two, four. So I don't know if this is like a update thing, uh, because that's another thing on this machine that I'll show you real quick is that when you flip up into this cover, there's actually a USB-C slot right here where the machine can be upgraded. So that's something that's definitely different than a lot of the machines that I've seen. Um, so it's actually got you know the ability to update. I'll let you guys know before the end of this video um, if I had heard back from them, but yeah, I'm, I'm just assuming that, you know, they're recommending 90-10, which that's fine. But, you know, the most common that I've, I have around here is 75-25. All right, guys. So, unfortunately, in this video, I'm not going to be able to test out the pulse welding capabilities on this. Because with pulse welding, you're actually supposed to be seeing less spatter. And the fact that I'm getting more um, shows me there's definitely not something right. I've tried, you know, in increasing, decreasing my gas. Um, I've tried, you know, but of course you're limited on the parameters that you can set on the machine. So, uh, you can only do so much and, uh, I've tried everything that I know how to do and I cannot cut down that spatter. I reached out to yes welder and just told them about the, the issue that I was having. And if there was any plans to make any changes or if maybe there's already a change and I need to, you know, download or update something on here. I don't know. As of right now, it's only been, you know, probably three or four days and I haven't heard back from them yet. So I just wanted to get this video out there uh, because I'm working on a lot of other videos. So 
whenever I hear back, I will make sure that I uh, go down in the description and update. So overall, I really do like the welder. I, I think the welds look really good. Obviously, I've been doing some more work on uh, this truck here. I'll get into some updates here after this, but but I, I really do think it's a nice machine. Um, I, I think that you know 110 or you know hooking it up outside to a 220. I mean they both were producing really good welds. I, I think that you know if there is some kind of update to the pulse mode where you can go in here and switch parameters, um, you know if there's already some kind of update, it would be nice if the machine was shipped with that stuff already updated. Um, you know, instead of you having to reach out and then get an update. So I, I don't know uh, the process on that. And these are still fairly new. So I do know that there's probably not a whole lot of stuff ironed out on it. So um, you, you've got to give them a little bit of slack there. You know, just for a welder itself, this is going to replace the other welder that I had. Like that'll probably be going towards a backup. So I do think in the sense of just a normal welder, this thing is absolutely great. So I, I have had no issues with it um, outside of that pulse mode. So, all right, so let's talk about some updates. So you see the C20 that I'm working on back here. I think it's a 1970. We're gonna get into this um, in some other videos, but uh, more importantly, I started painting some 56 Chevy parts. So I definitely want to take you over there and show you that because the color is beautiful. And um, I just kind of want to explain the plans for that thing. All right, so ignore all these panels scattered about. This is the way I like to do it, um, especially if it's just like a normal metallic color. Uh, there are metallics in here. I don't know if they're going to show up on camera real good, but this blue is very, very nice. This is the inner fender. This is that little extension piece that goes off the front. And then of course you've got the other inner fender. So um, on this type of stuff, I like to get all these little pieces painted. For the 56, we're doing this blue and then this white. So I'll show you how the two-tone is gonna work on there. But man, these colors together are gonna look great. So. All right, so most of the white is going to be on this part. So it's gonna be on the actual body. Um, it's gonna be kind of down this pillar, around the whole top. I think down this pillar kind of goes along here and then it goes down and you'd see where the trim piece goes down there. Um, so everything on top of that is gonna be white. Everything below that's gonna be blue. And then of course, everything over this is going to be white. So um, all around here. And then in the trunk here, got my spatter paint done. Um, that whole thing is actually gonna get uh, full interior, I think, in it eventually. But uh, I just, I like doing the spatter paint. I think it holds up really well. So obviously there's gonna be a video coming out very, very soon. I've been setting up my GoPro and getting some shots of that. Um, so, very, very soon there's gonna be a video of the whole car painted uh, and I'm gonna go through the whole thing, reassembling it, putting the engine in, the mechanical stuff, the electrical stuff, all that is going to get put in, uh, in video. So there's gonna be a lot of separate videos as well, which means it's just gonna be a ton of good uploads coming. And then of course, I haven't even actually like officially put anything on the channel about this one, but this is going to also be, you know, pretty much making a truck out of the cab. So there's gonna be a lot more uploads coming um, and I, I still promise you guys the supercharger video on my F100, um, that is still coming as well. So make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel and if you already are, I appreciate you. But once I get caught up on everything, um, I, I've been asked about my Nova. <laughs> there's so many things I wanna work on. But there's just a lot of stuff to do to make room in here and uh, you know, with like the physical process of building this new shop, um, you know, trying to, you know, get it all set up. Um, you know, I just, I, I need some, some help out here. And I, I think that that might change soon. So, all right guys, so if you wanna check out the welder, I will leave a link down in the description. Um, you can go straight to their website and look at it yourself. If there's any kind of specs that I missed, um, all that stuff will be on their website. If you have any other questions or, you know, just ask me 
you know, for my opinion, or if you have experience that you just want to tell me about with the welder, that's fine too. I'm open to all of it. So, all right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I will catch you guys in the next one where we're going to paint the 56 Chevy.